So how did I become interested in music and the performing arts? I was in the children's church choir and the teacher was actually really good. She had um, training in a, a thing called ORF and it's these instruments, a lot of mallet instruments. And it was, um, it, so we would kind of accompany ourselves. It was a lot of fifths and you know, kind of simple patterns and simple rhythms, but she was an excellent teacher. We were really lucky. And um, I always enjoyed music, despite the fact that my brother would constantly tell me how awful I was. So I was, I had done some theater. There was a, a place where you could go and do um, some storefront theater. It was like the 1970s. So there wasn't the options that we have, you know, now there's, there's stuff everywhere. But um, I, I was, I was all geared up to be in theater in middle school because they had a good theater program. They did full length plays and that was, that was going to be in theater. And uh, so we had an assembly one day and the high school choir came and sang for us and they wore long gowns and the boys wore tuxedos. It was like 1979. I'm sure it was very fancy. And it was the first time I heard Renaissance music. My parents are World War II vintage, and just there wasn't a lot of Ren music being played on the radio. So it was the first time I heard Renaissance music, and I, I mean, I needed something to like pick my jaw up off the ground because I, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard in my whole life. And they uh, would sing in, in quartet. Like, you know, you go soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So there was, it was a, a mixed choir. And I realize now that, you know, they were interspersed. And it's funny how, how brilliant this uh, memory is because, you know, I can't remember what happened yesterday, but I can remember that day where I heard the bel cantos from Patrick Henry High School. And I came home from that assembly and said to my mom, I'm going in choir. And she's all, what? You you're, were going to go in drama. I'm, I'm going in choir. I just heard the most amazing thing I've ever heard in my whole life. And my mom was all, okay, whatever. So I went to choir. The before, this, this gets a little weird, but whatever, I'm an artist. Uh, before I went to my first day of uh, junior high school, this was before we, my, my area didn't have middle schools, we had junior high schools, it was seven, eight, nine. I had a dream about the classroom and um, about a classroom and uh, the walls were breathing and it was it was like a really you know I woke up like whoa and um, maybe it was maybe it wasn't the very day before but it was within a few days of me starting junior high school and when I walked into choir third period uh, seventh grade choir girls seventh grade girls the boys and girls had separate classes and the this was the room I dreamt about and I was just like I was standing there going, ah, oh. you know, like when you get deja vu and you're like, oh my gosh, deja vu. But it was, you know, deja dream. And I, I was like, oh, this is the most creepy, awesome thing. And I didn't really have any friends yet. And I was, so I was totally like in my own head. So I went and sat down and then the choir teacher came in. He like entered like a Shakespearean actor. He had so much, um, charisma that it just you he bowled you over he was also at that point you know well into his career I remember thinking that he was you know older and now you know having done the math he was in his late 30s so I was like and I just stared at him like that you know that feeling like have I always known you this is so weird and and he went into a, a you know we must have been noisy or something. And there was also 72 girls in this class. So he went into a bit of a rant and, you know, put the, the fear of choir teacher in our hearts. But I was just like overwhelmed by this teacher, Mr. Salter. And, and that began my love affair with choir, not with Mr. Salter. I, that was Mr. Salter and Mr. G were, um, were, were very much in love. And they were also really risk taking because Mr. G came to work every day and he would, he would organize things and do a lot of, you know, volunteer work. He was often volunteer of the year. And, um, he had a piano player who would come in. Oh gosh, what was her name? 
and she would um, play the piano all day long for him. She improvised everything. I don't think she read music all that well. She could read. She was. She'd make stuff up. She had been, you know, like she would play the piano in like gin places in the old days. And she was Amy. Her name was Amy. Oh darn it! I can't even. I wish I could remember. Anyway, she had a way of scowling at us that would, you know, we'd be all. Mm. And we always thought, like, Mr. Salter was psychic, but he didn't realize that kids are just really loud. And it was, you know, we don't, kids don't keep secrets. So, um, I, the, uh, at the end of that year, we had auditions for the advanced group, which was called Belchamp. And I, uh, auditioned, even though my friends had to push me to do it because I didn't think I was very good. My brother had been telling me for a million years how awful I was. And I, I made the group. It was a small group, and, and we got to sing, you know, fancy music and wear long gowns. It was very fancy. And, you know, I, for a person who was really a jeans and sweatshirt type person, I really do like, you know, to throw on a ball gown once in a while. And, um, and, and so we, he would do uh, two musicals a year, and he'd sing an amazing array of music including Renaissance music. And um, it was, as soon I went to Europe uh, with that teacher my ninth grade year, and we were there for, uh, we toured Europe for three and a half weeks, went to an international competition, got first place, and I'm like, oh, this is, this is it, man. This is what I want to do. And from that point forward, I, I did everything with the intent of becoming a choir teacher. You can be in choir and not read music very well, and I was one of those. I really didn't read the music very well. I, I would learn it by ear, and, um, and, and I would follow which way the notes were going, but I didn't really read that well. So I knew that if I wanted to be a music teacher, I'd sure as heck better learn to read the music. So I defected from choir in high school and went over to band, and I learned French horn. Uh, actually, I went in to meet the band teacher who was kind of an irascible jerk, but he was a good teacher. If Hi, if you know who you are, and if for some reason you're watching this, you were a good teacher, if you were a little irascible. Um, and uh, he was like, oh, well, I need, Emma, what do you need? And he's like, well, I need this instrument, that instrument, and he got to French horn, and I'm like, oh, that's the round one, right? And, and, he, and he's like, yeah. Well, I want to play that one. He goes, okay, it's the hardest one of the brass instruments. Why don't you pick one of the easier ones? I'm like, no, I like that one. So my parents got me a beautiful French horn, and I started French horn lessons, and I started piano lessons, and I started voice lessons, and I was just as happy as could be. Spent my high school time doing that. I had a job at a, at a donut shop, and I would go through my voice lesson while I was cleaning donuts shelves and um went into college still absolutely driven to be a choir teacher and i as soon as i got out of uh college with my my bachelor's uh music education um i went i i uh, had several job offers and i wanted to teach in poway and i so i took a part-time job at black mountain middle school I still lived with my parents, so I could do that. I was 24, and I had um, to interview. We had two interviews. It was the second interview, the day after Mr. G died of AIDS, and the person who interviewed me said, "You know, I wouldn't have hired you, um, except that you know, there was like all these people backing me. That irascible band teacher had switched districts, and he he uh, spoke for me, and um, I had students." One of my boy students, whom I'd have known since she was six, she was, went to the principal. The principal was new, and um, one of the teachers I student taught for, he put in a good word for me. And so at 24, I started my job, and one of the teachers at Black Mountain was in that first class, and it was fun this year. Uh, it was this year or last year, and she went through all the things I did that first year. It was mind-blowing what a person can do when they don't have anything but that that's what they want and that's all they want I wasn't dating anybody I didn't really have bills I didn't have I had nothing but that and my choir teacher 
Mr. Salter, I, he like guided me the whole way, including to the point where when I started teaching at Black Mountain, he and I would, we, um, though he, he worked at Wagenheim Middle School, which was mm, several miles away, but, but not that far. We were, it, it's, I'm maybe 10 miles away, but it's in uh, San Diego City. We would, um, we taught, we team taught. So for four years, we, uh, we taught the same curriculum to our students. And I was so lucky as a, a brand new teacher to have someone who continued to guide me through the process, uh, you know, because 24 year, year olds are still very young. And so those, those during my 20s, I still had, you know, I had an older teacher you know, supporting me through this whole process. And he's still super important in my life. My children think he's Grandpa Lauren. And that's, as an adopted person, I just adopt other people. It's, it's completely fine for me. And so he's still in my life. And I met my husband because he worked in a theater. And that's where we were doing our shows. And I often told my kids they wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the Poway Center for the Performing Arts because I wouldn't have met Garrett and I would never have looked for anybody because I was too much enthralled with teaching choir. And uh, it's kind of my first love. Don't tell Garrett. All right, that's a long answer. Good luck with that.